Hi, my name is Dr. Klar, and I am a movement disorders neurologist with New Jersey Brain and Spine. I'm here to talk to you today um, about uh, our Parkinson's patients and um, some of the concerns that they've been having as it pertains to COVID-19. Um, you may have heard that patients with cardiac disease or lung disease um, are at higher risk for complications and a higher mortality rate. But Parkinson's patients are also considered a high-risk group should they have exposure to COVID-19. And why is that? Because the disease process makes everything slow down. And when your muscles aren't working appropriately, that can impair your gag reflex and your cough reflex, making it more difficult to breathe should you get the virus. Um, advanced patients who also have difficulty swallowing are at risk for aspiration pneumonia. So it is very important to do what you can to minimize your risk for exposure to COVID-19. The three most important things that you should focus on are um, first and foremost, hygiene. Um, you've heard it time and time again in the media, but um, it doesn't hurt to hear once more. Washing your hands for at least 20 seconds with warm water and soap is critical. Fortunately, the virus is very sensitive to soap and detergent. Um, so it's very important to wash your hands after touching any high contact areas like doorknobs or your phone or light switches. Um, it's also an important thing to wear a mask in public. Not so much because it may protect you from contracting the virus, um, but it would prevent you from spreading the germs if you are an asymptomatic carrier. Um, the second thing is social distancing, which we've all been practicing. Um, and social distancing does mean that you should stay six feet apart from your neighbor when you're going out in public. But social distancing doesn't mean social disengagement. Um, it's been very difficult for people to stay at home and everybody's been getting cabin fever, but there are a lot of fun ways to stay occupied. Um, there are fantastic videos online that um, support the Parkinson's community um, so that people can find ways to both be physically active at home as well as um, intellectually challenged. Um, and of course, the most important thing is staying active because everything about Parkinson's is trying to slow you down. So while we're staying at home, it's key to try to find ways to practice therapy exercises, whether that's LSVT or doing some yoga or using a stationary bicycle, or if you're staying far apart from uh, your neighbors, taking a walk outside for some fresh air. All of these things are wonderful ways um, to remain physically active and engaged. Um, the third and last thing that I want to emphasize is being organized about your Parkinson's bill of health. What that means is making sure that you've gotten your Pneumovax and your flu shot. It means getting a, a three month supply of your Parkinson's medications. And it means that um, uh, you would defer any unnecessary uh, appointments or switch um, non-urgent uh, appointments to televisits so that you minimize um, your interactions with um, other people at this current time. Um, now, that being said, it is important to um, have an, uh, it's important to have your physicians aware of what's going on um, should you start to feel like some symptoms are changing. We know that um, COVID-19 often presents with cough, fever, uh, body aches, sometimes shortness of breath. Um, and anytime you have um, any sort of uh, stressor to the body, whether it's the common cold or COVID, um, it can exacerbate your Parkinson's symptoms. So um, it's important to stay in close communication with your neurologist or with your general practitioner to make them abreast of what's going on. And it's also important to know that there are some cough medicines, should you have that symptom, there are some cough medicines that have an ingredient called dextromethorphan, and that does interact with a class of Parkinson's medications called MAOB inhibitors. And um, if you are concerned about taking a cough medicine, the safest thing to do is to reach out to your neurologist and let them know what's going on so you understand what is potentially um, a symptom from uh, possible COVID as opposed to exacerbation of your Parkinson's symptoms and how you can manage your medications. Um, 
in terms of our clinic, um, even though we are offering um, televisits for our community, um, we want to also let everybody know that we still have our uh, office open Monday through Friday. We are doing regular visits for those who absolutely need to be evaluated in person. And we have restructured our um, operations so that we minimize foot traffic in our clinic. So um, there are only so many doctors here on any given day. There are so many patients here on any given day. So um, we do not have crowded waiting rooms or crowded patient rooms. Um, there, it is an environment um, that we have uh, made to keep everybody safe and comfortable. Um, and we simply want to let our Parkinson's patients know that we are here from them or here for them always. Um, and at this point, I'd like to transfer um, to my colleague, Dr. Osme. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Carr. Uh, Human Asmi, uh, I'm a uh, movement disorder neurosurgeon at New Jersey Brain and Spine. And uh, um, just to uh, uh, reiterate what Dr. Clark was uh, saying in the sense that we are um, operational uh, here at uh, NJVS, uh, but with extreme caution for safety of our patients and safety of our staff um, un uh, until this uh, this virus passes and uh, until the, this, the, these difficult times uh, pass us by, we're going to function that way. We're available, um, of course, uh, always for any questions and, and medications and even in person. Um, uh, and of course, all the time by uh, uh, telemedicine. Uh, I've, I've gotten a lot of calls from concerned patients that have had um, surgery scheduled, uh, whether uh, the surgeries are going to be ongoing, about batteries and so forth, and just kind of wanted to put everybody's mind at ease. So right now, we are not doing any elective surgeries uh, for, the, for, for the obvious reason of of uh, um, uh, making sure hospitals are able to handle as many COVID patients as possible. We don't want to get in the way. And of course, for safety of, of patients, we don't want to proceed with surgeries uh, that potentially can wait uh, and have patients be exposed. Uh, uh, and uh, so for, for the, um, probably the next few weeks, we will be operating in, in this fashion. Now, in terms of batteries and battery changes, uh, for some patients running out of, of the battery or the battery um, stopping working may be very difficult. So those we consider urgent or emergent cases, and we are able to proceed with uh, replacing those uh, and keeping it as safe as possible to get the patients uh, safely out of the hospital. So those are still potentially ongoing, uh, but everything else is really on hold until um, uh, this um, this virus and uh, and uh, uh, the repercussions in the hospitals are um, uh, settled down a little bit. Um, so that's uh, I think a, a kind of a summary of what's happening. Uh, I think uh, uh, any other um, um, questions, Dr. Clark, that you've had patients reach out to you that uh, we can we can try to address. Um, I think that um, some patients have been concerned about loved ones being in nursing homes or um, assisted living facilities. And I think it's important to remember that while this is a very challenging time um, for individuals who are, who are in those settings, um, given uh, the virus, um, it's important to remember that you don't want to uh, make any rash decisions or proceed with um, um, new changes without consulting with your physician because you want to make sure that your loved ones are appropriately taken care of, um, even if it means that right now things are a little bit more restrictive. Um, and even for loved ones who are home and not in a facility and they need more assistance or they need help, but um, it is challenging to have um, strangers coming in and out of the home right now and you have to limit um, those coming um, through the front door. Um, I've heard some creative solutions about families offering temporary housing for you know one aid or just two aids to minimize the number of people coming in and out and just ensuring that um, patients are well taken care of. Um, so any changes that you feel are necessary during this time I think it's always important to speak to your physician to make sure that you have um, 
a medical sounding board as to what would be in the best interest of the patient. Great. Great. Just, um, I think we just want to wish everybody uh, health and safety. Um, and and uh, we will get through this. Um, we have some uh, incredible hospitals uh, and, and uh, frontline staff that are doing amazing work. Uh, and God willing, we'll get through this. Uh, and know we're, we're around if there's anything that uh, um, you need to talk about or any uh, medications that need to be ordered or anything uh, else for that matter. So um, um, just keep us in mind and uh, we hope to see you soon. Yes, we hope to see you very soon. Take care.